Hello, I am back. And while I didn't get done anywhere near what I was hoping to do today, Charlie's been working and getting a lot done. So let me show you what he's got done. So he has the chassis mocked up. He had the welder come and weld up the frame rails and then everything else is just mocked up. Uh, the exception is the steering uh, is bolted in place, but it will be unbolted soon. You can see everything that he did is a slot and tab configuration, or it meets with a, another piece of tubing or metal. And so all we had to do was put the little slots in the little tabs and pretty much friction holds most of it together. There's a few places where some clamps had to be put because things wouldn't uh, stay due to gravity. A uh, couple things that he did was he has these uh, fittings already uh, designed to where any of the tubing that goes through here, it uses these special uh, tie wraps that, that go into these little holes that are pre-drilled everywhere. Uh, there's holes for lines where he has special uh, fittings that go through. Uh, he has the mounts already drilled for the uh, headlights. It has a control box right there. Uh, the sway bar mounts to this plate right here. <laughs> Jack, you ought to tell them this is a Manta McLaren Lola chassis. You got to confuse them. That's because I didn't know what it was. So <laughs> is, there you go. This is nothing to do with anything that we've talked about so far. <laughs> this is a total different tangent. No Delahaye, no Cobra. This is Manta McLaren. All right. So one of the other things is it uses a uh, foot pedal box that mounts on the floor. A lot of them mount from the steering column down. These mount from the floor up, makes a lot cleaner assembly. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Everything is rectangular tubing. On this one, it actually uh, has a monocoque chassis. The fiberglass piece back here uh, has been replaced with aluminum. And so there's also aluminum plates that are going to go on each side with some uh, braces. So it will be a very solid structure. Again, that whole tab and slot Configuration is used here for the center tunnel. It'll go through here. Changes from a small uh, sheet metal to larger as it goes forward. Uh, he pre-drilled the uh, frame rails so that when he puts the pieces on, that there's the alignment holes. Same way with all the sheet metal. It also has pre-drilled holes so it's aligned. Here's a suspension on these chassis that has an unusual rear suspension. It uses two shocks back here instead of one. And so because it has two shocks, he actually split the difference and put an extra brace here to keep this from being under a huge bending force. Uh, he CNC's Strickland Racing into the back cross piece here. And where else did I see Strickland Racing? I was on the Cobra. Oh, okay. <laughs> see, I get confused. Well, we got a serial number. Yeah. So here's a back plate across here. Ties together the two uh, frame rails. As you can see, they're slotted. They fit into there. There's the T-slot for some of the various fittings. There's the opening. Here's the back piece. In this case, it has a clamshell that opens. And so this also acts as the mount for the clamshell. All of the holes are aligned. This is for uh, various uh, fittings, uh, lines that can go through there. Oh, and then uh, any of the wiring or cables, he already has the uh, places for that. Again, with the uh, holes already drilled so that fittings can go in there. All of your lines are neatly routed that way. Um, and again, there's a serial number. Uh, you're a manufacturer, right, Charlie? Mm -hmm. Okay. 4S9, so, that's me. Okay. So Charlie is actually a manufacturer. So these are his chassis. These are his cars. So uh, he's a car manufacturer. One of the reasons I partner with him. <laughs> that way I don't have to go through all that. I could just leverage what he's already done. Um, anything I missed, Charlie? Uh, these little Hayco deals for your group of people. These Hayco plugs are pretty cool little deals. It's a plastic with a rubber center. You puncture that with a cable or a wire and it shrinks and makes a waterproof airproof seal as opposed to a grommet that is going to leave slop there uh, i use these things i bet i use a hundred of these on every car i ever build 
But these are what these, uh, a lot of these holes are for, is for these rubber grommets. And that's another thing, he standardized everything. Those holes are either yeah. three quarter inch yeah. or one inch. Yeah. That's it, so uh, that means that you only have two different sizes and you just use whatever you need based on whether the uh, three quarter inch will be big enough or if not, yeah. then it has a one inch hole that'll use that. All right, I think that's got it all covered. We're getting ready to disassemble this. So yeah. he gave me, he said, hey, if you wanna make a video, get out here, make a video. And so this is your video. So like, subscribe, hit the alert, and we'll keep you updated. We're working as frantically as we can getting this stuff done. Um, I did work on the engine today. I got the head off here. Uh, I was scraping the gasket when he asked me to stop and do his video. And while I was doing his video, I figured I'd stop and do my video. That way we can get everything taken down. And unfortunately we get to put the Cobra body back in here. All right, everyone have a great day. And if you don't know what I'm doing, you don't know Jack.